Hello, my name is Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the 8th in our series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this 8th foundational video we'll be creating additional Qmu virtual machines. Having one emulated Raspberry Pi is very nice. It's a lot more useful if you've got several. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually create an additional two Qmu virtual machines. What we should be able to do is we should be able to produce the topology shown in this diagram. We'll have our original Qmu virtual machine, node 1, and in this video we'll create another two emulated Raspberry Pis, Qmu node 2 and Qmu node 3. Node 1 will be connected to tap adapter VME1, node 2 to VME2 and node 3 to VME3. The tap adapters are bridged through a Windows software bridge which will be basically taking the place of a real physical switch. In the diagram here I've shown a physical switch but of course we will actually be using the Windows inbuilt bridging facility and in order for our internet connection we will make use of internet connection sharing where we have shared the adapter that our internet comes in on whether that be the wireless adapter or the wired adapter using internet connection sharing with the wireless bridge and thereby with whichever network interfaces are part of that wireless bridge. Now this was a particularly interesting video to make and I'm not saying this is the only way you could go about doing this. There may well be other ways to create additional nodes. Um, however, having practiced a few times, I found that this is a relatively efficient way of doing it. In the previous video, we've got our node 1. We've customized our node 1, so as we've got the course files in the correct place. So when we browse to the emulated Raspberry Pi, we can actually see the course files in the notebooks on the web browser. If I open up node 1, you'll notice that we've got chestnut image, chestnut text file, kernel kumu, and the start.bat file. Everything apart from the chestnut.txt file, what we're going to do is we're going to copy and we're going to put into another two folders for the additional two nodes. So first things first, let's create another two folders. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create folders node 2. and node 3. Might just as well create both at the same time now. We'll go into node 1, we'll take our chestnut image and remember this chestnut image already has the modified chestnut.txt file in place with the host name of Kumu RPI 1. So we've already put the text file chestnut.txt into the chestnut image using OSF mount in the previous video and we've got the device name of Kumu RPI 1 and a device password of TM357 which is used when we browse to the device either using PL app or browse via the web browser to the device. So we don't really need that text file anymore now because that's already located inside that chestnut image. So what we will do now is we will control click and copy kumu.image kernel kumu4434 jesse and the windows batch file start.bat. So I'll control click and then control C to copy We'll go back into Downloads, we're going to Node 2, and Paste. This is where it's very helpful to have a very fast hard drive system. Um, this is a uh, Samsung 850 Evo SSD drive. Uh, it's actually a one terabyte Samsung 850 Evo in here, so a uh, lap of luxury really. 
It's a very fast hard drive, so it makes this process a bit quicker. If you're doing this with a mechanical hard drive, it will be a little bit slower than this. So that's the uh, files that we need for node 2. And then once they're copied across, which didn't take very long really, we'll copy them across into node 3. We may find that the copy is actually very fractionally faster this time because it may well have used a little bit of the RAM. There's 32 gig of RAM on this laptop, which also helps. Though it's an old laptop, it's very well specified. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got our original Node 1, which is a fully working system. It's been customized. Everything's 100% the way we wish it to work. That's now working as a master or a template node. We've created two folders, node 2 and node 3, and we've copied chestnut image, the operating system image, the Windows batch file, and the kernel kumu. That's the kernel image for the kumu Raspberry Pi emulator into those folders. Now, in order to make this work, I'm not saying this is the only way you can do it, you could probably do it in a different way or in a different order, but uh, this is the way I'm doing it. I leave node 1 switched off and I start node 2. Okay, I've not made any changes whatsoever to the Windows batch file. I've just started node 2. And this is why I've had to leave node 1 switched off because if node 1 was switched on it would be trying to use VME1, the same network tap adapter. Um, and obviously you can't have two systems using exactly the same network card. Now I could change that but at this particular point I don't want to change that. I'm doing this in a specific order so without making any changes I'm just starting node 2. and we can see the Kumu instance is loading quite happily. However, because this is literally a direct photocopy of the Node 1 image, uh, we will have the host name set to Kumu RPI 1. We'll have the same MAC address on the network card. Um, it will be using the same Windows Tap adapter. So there are some changes we need to make. But the first change we're going to make is we're going to actually change the host name. And we're going to do that by allowing node 2 to start and then going in to the forward slash boot directory finding the chestnut.txt file and changing the host name there. Now you could do this by using OSF mount again. What I found is if you do it that way round what tends to happen is when you boot the system it loses the contents of the notebooks folder again and you have to do the copy across of the course, in course files from the notebooks folder. I've discovered if we do it this way, it retains the copy of the uh, course materials in the notebooks folder. So you can see we've booted up, we've actually got exactly the same IP address, 137.220. We've got the same host name. I'm going to log in now with the user pi and the password raspberry. I'll wait a few seconds for it to load. And now what we will do is we will change the contents of the chestnut.txt file in the forward slash boot directory. So I'm going to need to be the root user to do this, so I'll use a sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash chestnut.txt change the hostname across to Kumu RPI 2 and I will hit control O so holding the left control key down and hitting O to write hit the enter key to accept the name uh, I haven't changed the name it's still boot chestnut.txt and then control X to exit you can see the uh, shortcuts are along the bottom of the nano window control O to write out control X to exit Okay, that's good. 
and then what we'll do is we'll power down that system. So I'll do a quick sync just to make sure that everything's written to memory that should be and I will do a sudo power off. Okay, so that's node 2 done. And again, without starting up node 1, I'm going to do exactly the same change in the node 3 folder. So wait for it to power off. It's powered off. You'll always get this kernel panic, but you'll notice it's after it's reached the target power off. So it panics after it's stopped effectively. So if we can shut that one down. I'm going to go into the node 3 folder now and do exactly the same thing. Start.bat. It's loading quite happily. Of course, we're again using VME1 because I haven't changed the batch file at the moment. This is why we had to have node 1 switched off. Otherwise, it literally wouldn't start because it would be trying to use a Windows tap adapter that was already attached to a run-in system. I haven't changed the MAC address yet either, so they're the next jobs that we'll do. But the first thing we need to do is change the host name. And you really need to do that before you boot up the original node, node 1. OK, so we're now loading up. What I'll do is I'll minimise the command prompt in the background. Uh, be very, very careful not to actually shut that, obviously, otherwise you'll stop the Kumu load. Kumu is now loading up, so this will be node 3. Node 3, of course, is a direct copy of node 1, so again, we'll have uh, the same IP address, the same MAC address, the same host name. So it's a case of just going into the system and using nano as the root user. So we'll put sudo in front to change the chestnut.txt file. Again, you'll notice the Windows DHCP server that's running as part of Windows Internet Connection Sharing is seeing the same host name, it's seeing the same MAC address, so it's giving out the same IP address. So all of these systems currently have the same IP address on them. This is another reason why we don't want to start them all at once. I will log in as Pi with the password of Raspberry. Wait a few seconds until it's fully loaded. Okay. The nice thing with using it, doing it this way is not only do we have the course materials already in the notebooks folder, but um, SSH is also already enabled. So, and if you added anything else to your template, then of course whatever you had on that master template would also come across to the copies. Now it's just a case of sudo nano. It's a very nice text editor nano forward slash boot chestnut.txt. And this one we'll call QRPI3 for node 3. Control O to, enter, uh, to uh, save the name. Enter key. Control X to exit. We'll do a sync. And we'll do a sudo power off. Great. OK. So we've changed the host names now on these devices. Now what we're going to do, we're now safe to go in and modify the batch files. I'll stop node 3. I'll do them in order. So we'll start with node 2. Right click on the batch file, go to edit, uh, we've got to be very careful to make sure that we do the changes that we require here. Uh, the changes we require are to change the interface name to a second Windows Tab Adapter, so that will be VME2, and to change the MAC address to another unique MAC address. So I'm using 11 at the end of the MAC address, so I'll change that to 12. 
Okay, so that's all good. We need to save that now. So I can do that with Control S, and then we'll exit. Now, I'm not going to start it at the moment. Now I'm going to go into node 3. Again, do exactly the same thing. Edit the batch file. Windows is kind of strange. That was a bigger text than that last time. I haven't changed anything at all, but the text is slightly different size. Work that one out. Um, I'm going to change that to interface name VME3 for the third Windows Tap Adapter. We'll change the MAC address to 13 at the end. We'll hit Control S to save. And then we will close that window. Again, I'm not going to start that yet. Now we should be safe to start node 1. We can see that node 1 is running. We can see that node 1 is connecting to the interface name VME1, the first Windows tap adapter, with a MAC address of 10, 10, 11. So we've got a unique MAC address. We're on a unique Windows tap adapter, network, virtual network card. We also should have a unique host name. Uh, this, of course, being the master image, this will just be the host name it's always had. which would be uh, Kumu RPI1. So we'll wait for that to load. That should get the IP address that it's always had from the DHCP server as part of a Windows internet connection sharing. When we start the other Raspberry Pis up, Node 2 and Node 3, what should happen is we should initially get the same IP address. Uh, that would be 137.220. However, very rapidly it should as part of the DHCP service, this is their Discover, Offer, Request, Acknowledge, the famous DORA, um, it should realise that that IP address has already been given out to a host on the system. And those nodes would then get a different IP address. So you may see it get the same IP address as this node initially uh, and then switch to a different IP address. So there we go. So there's node 1 up and running, 192.168.137.220. I'll just log in quickly pi as the user raspberry is the password this will be a slightly longer video because obviously we're doing quite a lot of work on this one and there we go there's our IP address MAC address etc now let's start up, this is where it gets really interesting, let's start up node 2. Okay if we look at the command prompt now for node 2 you'll notice that the interface name has changed to VME2 because we made that slight modification in the Windows batch file to make sure that we were connecting to the second Windows tap adapter. We've also changed the MAC address to 101012 so we now have a unique virtual network card we're connecting to, a unique MAC address or physical or hardware address. The Kumu window is loading so far <laughs> so good now what should happen is it should look in forward slash boot look at the chestnut.txt file that we modified and it should find the host name of kumu rpi2 this means we'll have a unique host name a unique network card virtual network card and a unique MAC address which should cause us no problems on the network and when it does its DHCP discover offer request acknowledge um, the DHCP server should realize that there we go it's got the same IP address at the moment 137.220 
and there we go look at that how cool is that that's networking working in action right before your eyes uh, as the Dora process operated uh, the uh, host name was changed you might have noticed it found the chestnut.txt file changed the host name um, did a DHCP request with a different host name from a different MAC address and uh, of course uh, because we've already had uh, a system running with 220 in other words node 1 uh, this system node 2 has been allocated a different IP address we're now on 137.130 okay so that's good we'll log in with Pi with the user Raspberry and you have your second Raspberry Pi up and running let's try that again Ras Berry. That's better. Now I've typed Raspberry a million times, but I always somehow or other seem to spell it wrong. There we go. And uh, if we have a quick look in the want a relative path, not an absolute path. No notebooks folder. You see the course materials are still there. Okay, this is good. So we're ready with another running Raspberry Pi now on 137.130. And just to finish things off, let's start up number three. We'll go back to node three. And run a batch file. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to do one very quick check of that batch file. I'm just being a bit paranoid here. I just want to make sure I've changed the interface name to VME03. I definitely did. I definitely changed the MAC address, so all should be well in the world. Double click. You'll know if you didn't, because if you didn't, it literally will not run. You'll get for a fraction of a second this command prompt pop up and it'll disappear, and that's as far as it'll go. Okay, so we can see that we've got VME3, unique. Windows Tap Adapter, Virtual Network Card, Unique MAC Address. Uh, because we changed the chestnut.txt file to QMU RPI3, we've got a unique host name. So there should be no reason whatsoever why this virtual or emulated Raspberry Pi shouldn't run effectively. Now as this boots up, it loads its uh, modules, and its services, it's found the hard drive, it's doing file system checks, it's mounted the forward slash boot partition, um, it's raising the network interfaces. We should see it originally get that same IP address as node 1, so 137.220. And then what it will do is it will read the chestnut.txt file. Notice that the hostname has changed. We'll switch to that new hostname. Um, it'll do a Dora, mess a Dora broadcast. There we go, 137.220. It should now, if you look very closely, chestnut.txt found. You might have just seen it briefly. It does the Dora broadcast, and we've now got a IP address of 137.254. Interestingly enough, that's the very last IP address in the subnet, which is just a pure um, coincidence. But there we go. We'll log in with Pi with a password of. Raspberry and effectively what we've now got is we've got this setup we've got node 1 node 2 and node 3 going through VME 1 VME 2 VME 3 VME 1, 2 and 3 are bridged inside the Windows bridge. The Windows bridge has the IP address of 192.168.137.1 on it, uh, which means that when we uh, share an internet connection with it, using Windows internet connection sharing, uh, we can all not only access the internet from these Pis, uh, but we should also be able to access each other because they're bridged together. And of course, these Pies will have got their IP addresses from the DHCP server that's running as part of Windows Internet Connection Sharing. Wow. So there's RPI 1. Uh, sorry, that's RPI 3. Let's see if we can find... Uh, let's 
and there's RPI 2. So we've got three Raspberry Pis, three emulated R Raspberry Pis on the system. And where is RPI 1? There's RPI 1. Excellent. So what we should be able to do now is just to prove a point. Um, we've got uh, 130 as the IP address for RPI 2 and 224 I believe it was, no, 254 as the IP address for RPI 3. So let's try doing a ping. We will ping 192, 192.168.137.130. There we go. That's node 1 pinging node 2. I'll hit the up arrow and I'll ping 254. That's node 1 pinging node 3. How good is that? Um, what we can do is we can do an ARP minus A to look at the contents of the ARP cache on the first emulated Raspberry Pi. And we can see that we've got kumu rpi1.mshome.net. That's uh, pinging a um, different system there. Let's have a little look. Ah, oh, now that's interesting. It hasn't actually updated the host names yet. That's purely because the ARP cache hasn't cleared itself yet. Uh, it's still got Kumu RPI 1 down for uh, node 3. That's just a case of um, updating the ARP cache. Once the ARP cache is updated, uh, it should put the right host name in there as well. How good is that? Okay, so we now have one, two, three emulated Raspberry Pis. What we've effectively done is we've built that. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this particular video up. So I hope you found that useful and uh, be very nice if you could join me for the next video.